If this is your first time visiting my channel or you clicked this video by accident, welcome. And if you are returning, it is great to see you again. This is Mr. Substep, and today I'm going to be opening up just a couple envelopes and then starting a new master set, which I've currently already started, but I didn't have a binder previously. So I went on Amazon, got this for $21, which is kind of unfortunate because I feel like these binders should be like $20 or less. But I just feel like the amount of them out there just isn't that much, which is kind of mind-blowing. Like, they make a bunch, and then they sell it really quickly, and they just never quite meet demand. At least that's what I'm seeing, because I feel like these binders are always slightly overpriced. But, alas, this one will be perfect for this black and white base set that I'm filling. But before we get into that, I have a ton of talking points today. So I'm going to open up these two letters, and then we will fill the binders and go through all the talking points. So if you're here for an opening or some crazy banger cards then this video probably isn't for you. But if you're just here to kick back, relax, listen to some random dude ramble on about things that he enjoys and maybe potentially we share in those enjoyments, then you made it to the right place. All right, so what do you think came in this first envelope? They didn't use tape, which you know what is quite all right. It wasn't necessary for this order, I don't think. But let's take it out. Okay, this feels like multiple cards in one sleeve. Oh, it definitely is. And we start out with this Zatu, the pre-release promo from Paradox Rift, the only pre-release promo from Paradox Rift that I was missing. Very wonderful, a clean copy, if I do say so myself, and a reusable top loader for any singles that I sell in the future. Let's see, oh, two cards are here. Oh, we have the Roaring Moon EX. Look at that glitter, look at that glam. Scarlet and Violet 67, this came in a collection box. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've realized that I'm not really buying a ton of collection boxes and stuff anymore. I get a, a booster box, elite trainer boxes for sets. But all the other miscellaneous products, I've just been buying singles, you know, just really focusing on collecting the sets and all the other stuff. I do love opening. I do love opening, but I've just been reprioritizing. And we do have the other collection box promo, an Iron Valiant EX. Like always, I'll have shown prices down below. Unless I paid less than a dollar, then I won't show it. But I think all of these were at least more than a dollar. Now, the boxes usually run for 20 and then these promos end up being around a dollar or two. So, ooh, this one looks a little bit crinkled. Oh, I actually pre-opened this one. That's why. Let's see what's inside. All right, and the final envelope of this opening has a semi-rigid holder that was cut at the top, so I guess it makes it slightly easier for it to come out. I guess that's one way to make it slightly smaller. Look at that, innovation at its finest. And we have another promo card in Greninja EX. So this one is surprisingly pricey, and it's not because it's a super playable card or anything like that. I mean, it is Greninja, which is fairly popular. I'm pretty sure, was there Greninja that won the most popular Pokemon of the year, one of the years? Um, but I think it's because it's from those battle decks or the EX battle decks that no one wants to buy and open. So these promos actually end up racking quite a bit of price. And I usually will buy the battle decks if the prices of the promos like combined end up being the price of just buying the battle decks, which a lot of times they start to become that. But I just ended up getting it at a price. I didn't feel like getting the battle deck and all the bulk. I mean, could I have sold some of the more playable cards? Yes. But just one of the promos. So now I have the Kangaskhan and the Greninja, which came in that pair. And that is actually all the cards that I got in the mail for this. So I have, we're just going to be doing two binders, the Starlet and Violet promos and the black and white base set cards. But I do have a lot of black and white base set to put into the binder and I haven't put anything in there. So it'll be uh, quite spacious for sure. So it'll probably take me a while to count, but I do have some talking points to go through in the meantime. All right, we are going to start out with a black and white base set and a nice black and white binder isn't perfect. I did want to get like a white zip binder, but then... I remembered all my older sets are in binders that are this size, so all the newer sets I'll get into the nicer binders. But this is going to be rough because I am going to have to be counting by twos. Luckily, black and white doesn't have a bunch of ultra rares mixed in the middle. All of the ultra rares are towards the back as well as the energies. So everything will just be counting by two, which is a little bit easier, but still kind of rough. So the first card it is in, and the first thing I'll talk about is the Chinese, the Chinese, <laughs> the Chinese anime that I'm watching. I think it starts with a D, what it's called. But I, I, I did finish the Daily Life of the Immortal King season three. Once again, another not very good season. Would not recommend it to a friend. But randomly, while I was watching season three, season four started coming out on Crunchyroll. So I did start watching that, and surprisingly, season four is actually decent. If you're going to watch any of it, which eh, I don't know if I'd recommend it, I think season one I'd give a 7 out of 10 and then everything else a 6 and below. Season one was decent, but season four is actually turning out to be decent. So there is that. The holidays are now over, so I am back to work. So back to the grind. It was nice that one week where January 1st happened at the beginning of the week, so it was only like a three-day work week for me since I took some time or I took a sick day, which was nice. But overall, 
back to work, back to the grind. Let me know if you're on that grind. You know what I'm saying. All right, and I am counting in between the cuts because it is a lot of counting. Next up we have, so my current plan to release videos now, which surprisingly my videos have been doing decent, so thank you guys so much. I'm not sure what's going on with YouTube or the algorithm or what's happening, but for those of you that are sticking around or watching more than one video, I definitely appreciate you, and I will always reply in the comments below, or you can hit me up in Discord, email, whatever. I'm always down to conversate. So every four days is when I plan. So for example, I'm filming this on a Thursday, a video posted today, so my next video will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. My next video will be posted on Monday, and that's gonna kind of how I'm. That's kind of how I'm going to do it, unless I have to like split some videos or something just came out, and it just makes sense to upload it as soon as possible. But that's how I plan on rolling it from now on. So if you haven't seen a video in three days, just know that that fourth day one is probably coming. And there is number twenty-eight Oshawott. I feel like I'm taking so much risk. Hopefully, I don't have to move cards in the long run because that would really suck. If you ever made a mistake and putting together a master set binder and missing like one of the slots and having to move a bunch of cards to the right or to the left. Mainly it would be to the right, I think. Let me know, because that is a struggle and I've done it multiple times, believe me. Currently, I am shopping for a laptop, so I think this year I might wanna start doing some type of gaming on this channel, nothing like crazy like streaming or anything like that, but there is a remake of my favorite game of all time coming out and I think that would be the best game to maybe long do long form and then just cut highlights up i don't know i'm gonna experiment it might not even happen but that's kind of what's going through my mind right now but i am and looking for a laptop that would probably be good for video editing and all that stuff because i've been doing everything on my phone which the phone can do a lot but it just gets annoying after a while and i make my videos and then i delete them forever because there's just not enough space to like hold everything together there goes the samurai also my i'm because of this new year, one of my goals is to lose out the 10 pounds, like I said last year, but I stayed the same. And I'm changing my diet a little bit. This is the first time I've ever like bought protein because normally I just try to consume protein in my you know day-to-day -day diet. And then I did the math and I feel like on a lot of days, I'm not actually meeting my protein goals. So for the first time I bought protein that I can like scoop and put into stuff and everything like that. So we'll see if it makes any difference or anything like that, but so far so good. So let me know if you have any good protein recommendations out there. I know I've always seen the gold standard, so I'm like, oh, let me get that. But then mystery is like, maybe you should just get the one that we have, like we've tried protein shakes of before. And so I got that decent so far. And it's just like an easy, convenient way to get a ton of protein in without having to consume, you know, a ton of freaking chicken breast or whatever. Wow, that was the biggest gap yet. So I have started watching My Hero Academia. And I've been pushing it off for a while. A bunch of people have recommended it to me. It's kind of a, you know, a feel-good, classic shonen coming-of-age story. And I, I have to be honest with you. I freaking love it. It's so easygoing. You know, I, I finished season one already, which is only like 13 episodes. And I'm in the middle of season two, right before they're, they're like in the tournament where they're doing the one-on-one -on -one fights and all that stuff. So that's where I'm at right now. Been loving the show. Love season one. Uh, a lot of people have complained about the main character for being too whiny. I don't, I've don't. i watched Vinland Saga Season 1 with Thorfinn, so there's really not a lot that can be pretty whiny. And there's been a lot of whiny main characters in a lot of like the big anime, so Deku is not that bad at all. And I just, I love the characters in the show. I mean, I, I really like Deku, but probably one of my favorite characters is maybe the guy that has like the calves that are freaking rockets and he can run really fast. He's like the, the class leader or whatever. I like him a lot. And I do like the Sasuke of I do like the Sasuke of the show because his powers are just really cool and I want to see more of what he can do. Let me know if you've ever seen the show, who your favorite characters are. Please no spoilers. I know a new season's coming out this year and there's like over 100 episodes, so that's why I'm kind of trying to catch up now. But I've been putting it off long enough, so I, I definitely want to get started on it. Beautiful energy search. So those random three, the Oshawa, the Purloin, and the energy search, I actually got those cards out of a black and white based sample pack. So that's why I have those three random cards from Black and White. So those are the only cards that I pulled. Everything else in this set I plan to buy singles of. If you watch College American Football, they did just recently have the championship. Was it the greatest game ever? No, I mean, the semifinal games were probably the best games. But it was kind of cool to see two teams that you haven't seen in the, the championship. The Natty. I don't know, when did people start calling it the Natty? Because it's the national championship, but in recent years, everyone's been calling it the Natty. And I do not remember people calling it the Natty in the past, but I guess that's a thing to call it nowadays. Um, and then you had two big coaches, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban. Well, Bill Belichick might be going to another team, and then Nick Saban, I guess, is retiring. I mean, they're both in their 70s, which I didn't even realize. But yeah, let me know if you uh, were into any of those games. But 
it's it's kind of a big deal. And now we are starting with the energies, which I believe I should be able to count these. Let me know if you've ever seen. Okay, I have a Grass Energy Master Set, and I'm not able to find a regular reverse hollow of a regular black and white base set card or base set energy. I found a bunch of different like play promos and like all these fancy ones, but I have not been able to find just a normal reverse hollow of this. Let me know if the black and white base set reverse hollow energies exist. And if they do, I will buy a grass energy from you. But yeah. Next up, I did have my recent eBay sale. So I don't list on eBay too often because I usually list on eBay like lots or like really, really expensive cards and not TCG player, like stuff that you want to see pictures of. And I sold all my bulk from uh, Shiny Treasures EX box. Basically, I kept the uh, the shinies and then like the full arts or whatever, and then I sold all the rest. And I didn't make as much money as I wanted to, but I also didn't want all that bulk because I don't collect Japanese like that. I just like to open it and then keep the, the good stuff. Um, but it did sell, which is nice. So, I mean, it's something instead of sitting around because it's, it's hard to get rid of bulk if because a lot of places only accept English and no energies and all that stuff, you know, near mint cards and all that. So I did finally catch up on my Pokedex. I know I mentioned that I finished the DLC, but I finally actually did that. And I guess a new part got released. There's a one more Pokemon to get. And I haven't done any of it yet, but Austin John Plays released a video. And of course, I'm I'm following that guy. So anytime he releases an update, I put it to my watch later. And it's basically like a task for me to do in the game. So probably this weekend, I will try to get that last Pokemon or whatever. And then I'm still missing the two Paradox exclusives from Violet. So maybe I might go onto the GTS or whatever and try to get those traded with some of the extra shinies that I have. But that's my update. I think I even have a photo too. So I'll show up that photo. This week at work, we are pretty spoiled, and they give us, like, food every other week for lunch, which is pretty nice uh, for, like, our staff meeting, and they did barbecue, and this is by far the best meal that I've had. The barbecue was so good. I ate way too much, and the person that gets all the food, they also provided a bunch of ice cream, too, so I've been having, like, an ice cream sandwich every day at work, which, not ideal, not very good for the diet that I'm trying to achieve, but at the same time, like, I don't have ice cream at the house, so... If you're giving me a chance for ice cream, I am going to take it. So there's that. And now we actually get to the ultra rares, which is kind of nice. Black and white doing the full arts, which is pretty awesome. Got the Zekrom and, of course, the final card in this set, the only secret rare in Pikachu, which is very beautiful. And now this black and white binder has a little bit of life to it. Don't worry, we will be coming back. I have another big order from Full Grip Gaming coming in shortly. All right, and now we just have the Scarlet and Violet promo binder. This one will be much easier, and I don't have to do as many cuts and count and all that stuff. So there was the Portland Regional, so the Pokemon trading card game. In case you don't know, people actually play this game in real life. And they had a tournament recently in Portland, which is a regional, which is a pretty good size event. It's just shallow of an international championship, and then that's just shallow of the world championship. But uh, the regional was a Giratina versus Giratina, so two Lost Box decks. Now I know what you're thinking. Could it get any boring than that? And I mean, it could, you could do like two stall decks or something, but it was actually pretty intense. And I think you'd be surprised at the result. So I know it's rough to watch Lost Box gameplay, but I highly recommend watching it because Giratina, when it's hitting, like it is almost like the hardest deck to beat, but when it's not hitting, like it flounders and it was very, it was, they were very fun matches to watch. So I highly recommend if you get a chance, watch that finals. And if you're like me, you watch videos on two times or 1.5 times speed, so it goes pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, great finals. I already talked about My Hero. I had that as a separate note because I was so excited about it. But I did do my first dance lesson, so I went over my New Year's resolutions this year, and one of them is to learn some partner dances with Mystery. And we did our first dance lesson. It was more of a consult, but we did do some dancing, did some basics of salsa. So salsa is going to be the first dance that we learn, and... It's pretty fun, actually very simple. So, I mean, obviously we're gonna keep adding more and more wrinkles to it as we get better and better, but it was fun to do my first dance lesson, especially with her, because I normally just do like free form, freestyle, just whatever my body wants to do, the music type dancing. But I think it's good to, you know, dance with a partner. And it's something fun that I can do with Mystery, and she's down to do that, so there's that. And the final talking point that I have is Temporal Forces. They did release their pre-orders on the PokemonCenter.com for their Elite Trainer boxes. Those are just something that I collect a lot of because I like them. And for some reason, the stamp promos, like a lot of people like the stamp promos. So that's cool too. So then I have the non-stamped ones for this binder. And then the stamp promos I can keep to the side, which is kind of cool. But 
I'm probably gonna do this for all of Scarlet and Violet, and then after Scarlet and Violet, I'm just gonna probably be very picky with what cards I get. I don't think I'll be completing sets anymore unless they're older sets, but pre-ordered two of each, because of course this is gonna be another set that has two variants, which is really annoying, because I wish they didn't do that, because then it's like double the amount, but then I get to open more, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that is actually all I have for this video. I know my talking points were all over the place, but I just kind of let them build up, and then when I have an opportunity to talk to y'all, then I, I just let it out, you know? I let my feelings, I put my feelings on this black fold-out table. This table is actually really good for, like, beer pong or ping pong or other games like that. So that is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and stopping by, and let me know what you have going on in your life. It can be about anything. It does not have to be Pokemon or trading card game related, but, you know, I'm always down to talk about that too. Thanks so much again for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.